Let's go ahead and get started if we can. Welcome to the uh, January first CCAC meeting of uh, 2017. Um, is there a sign-up sheet going around? Are those papers on the corner? All right, there's a sign-in sheet going around. Please sign in. Um, as always, let's start with introductions real quickly. I'm Dave Stoner. I chair the CCAC. Uh, they just outside of Crozet and West. And Mike Huckle, CCAC <coughs> member. I live in the Corey Farm. Mark Vila, CCAC member. I live across the Big House. Dean Lyson, CCAC member. And I'm from Western Ridge. John McKean, CCAC. Ms. Marshall, CCAC. I'm in downtown Crozet. I'm Jenny Moore. I'm the planning commissioner for Whitehall. Um, I live <laughs> closer to my foot. I'm kind of sad. I'm Phil Best, and I live in the greater Crozet metropolitan area. I'm James King. I live on Half Mile Branch Road, and part of the CCAC. I'm Costas Umbers and Crozet. John Savage. I live in the Highlands area, CCAC. Me, Paul Brady, I live at Meacham's River. Jim Crosby, Crozet today. I love the Crozet. Bill Schrader, Stonegate. Joe Moore, Highlands. Emily Hillary, I'm Morgan. Allie Pesch, Crozet Gazette. Mike Marshall, Crozet Gazette. Jim Duncan, Crozet. Again, welcome everybody. Um, we sent an agenda around on Friday. There's extra copies and extra copies of handouts from on the side tables if anybody would like. Um, any comments, suggestions, additions to the agenda? I actually have two that I've been asked to add. One is about a Virginia Festival of the Book event, which I'll propose to do maybe right after we do number four. And then, secondly, Emily um, had a couple of staff issues issue she wanted to announce um, and talk about, so we might actually start off with that. Uh, but before we jump to that, um, again, likewise, I think there's time, I'll add just a little bit of it. All right. It's not about the music. <laughs> <laughs> but you did get that in <laughs> <eight> minutes. <laughs> circulated. Thanks, James, as always. Um, we had a chance to take a look at it. And it also, the minutes of the resolution we did last time were circulated everybody. Um, do I hear a motion on approval of the minutes from the December 14th meeting? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Uh, Thank you all. Um, with that, let's jump to our first item. And again, as I mentioned, Emily had a couple things she wanted to chat about. So, um, all right. So, I wanted to give you guys an update on a couple things that we've been talking about um, these past couple months. One is the community meeting cash proper policy um, thing that came up at the joint meeting back in October. Um, I had a meeting with Greg Kempner and Elaine Eccles yesterday to go through sort of the next steps on that. Um, I think we came out of the chair meeting with um, some uh, idea for sort of what the past world would, would be. We shared that with the planning commission and the board right before Christmas. Um, and we haven't heard any comments or questions back from them, so we think we're ready to move forward. Um, basically what it came down to was let's keep community meetings here at CAC meetings um, where that makes sense. Uh, for the majority of cases, sometimes the way the meetings line up, um, it's not possible to accommodate that. Um, but generally, that would be the direction that we take. Um, all CAC members will probably, and I'll get back to the probably in a second, but we'll probably have to have an orientation to make sure that everyone's on the same page for what is allowable and not allowable with the new legislation. Um, and that will also provide some written guidance that the county's attorney, county attorney will prepare 
um, so that in meetings you can sort of reference the do's and don'ts um, at a glance. And the staff person that comes um, for the project, um, that's assigned to be the planner for the project, um, will sort of go over the ground rules at the beginning of the community meeting portion so that everyone in the sort of is aware of what's going on. Um, also out of that process, we heard from a lot of CACs, and I think this one in particular, that um, having this, like a baseline of information that developers are supposed to be providing would be really helpful. Um, and also, um, sometimes it feels like not everyone really knows what the purpose of the community meeting is. So the planner that comes to the meeting is going to um, just give like one or two minutes of this is what we're looking to get out of this. Um, ahead of time, they'll get applicants will get sort of a, a sheet with bullets, um, and I'll, we'll be wrapping all this up and sending it out to you all soon. But just um, so you know, they'll have a sheet that has all the sort of minimum information that they need to cover in their presentation. Um, and then there'll be sort of a process by which um, the planner will make sure that you all receive updates if the project has significant changes as it moves its way through the review process. That happens sometimes um, when the comments come back from VDOT and the service authority. Uh, changes come when it hits the planning commission and sometimes the CAC says, well, wait a second, that doesn't look anything like what you showed us before. What happened? So <coughs> making sure that we keep you in the loop on that. Um, so those are some sort of process improvements that are coming out of that that are not related to the cash proper policy, but I hope will help everyone feel better about the process. Um, I said probably get an orientation. That's because um, in this year's legislative session over in Richmond, uh, there is a bill, um, get out your pens, <laughs> HB 1735. And that is, uh, it's just proposed at this point, but it would tweak the legislation to put a definition around which, um, who the new policy would apply to. There's an issue, you'll remember, with making suggestions about proffers that applies to basically anyone on staff, anyone on a committee like this. Um, the HB 1735 would definitively tie that only to board and planning commissioners. Um, so that would sort of free you of that. Uh, it's being sponsored by uh, David Bolivar, who's in Northern Virginia. Um, but uh, if you would like to contact your local delegate to voice an opinion about that, uh, this session is a short one. It ends February 25th. Uh, so we will know by the end of February which way that went. Um, and we will then probably look to schedule an orientation sometime in March. Um, but we'll be able to get that written guidance to you before any of that. Um, but again, if, uh, if HB1735 passes, then none of this um, is relevant for anyone except for Jenny. Um, also wanted to just let you know that the, rev the CTV, the Commonwealth Transportation Board, met yesterday. Um, you may have read in the papers that uh, the, the initial scoring for the revenue sharing program, um, not the revenue sharing program, but state funding for road projects came back um, using that new uh, it was formerly House Bill 2, but they changed it to Smart Scale, um, where VDOT is uh, was sort of ranking projects against like six criteria. Um, Gerald Kotobu came um, maybe about a year ago and told you about all that. Uh, there were two projects, three projects for Crozet in um, in there. Uh, one of them scored high enough that it could get funded. Um, this is just the preliminary score round, um, and they'll be doing uh, they'll be making the actual funding decisions in May. Um, but the, the roundabout at 151-250 uh, scored in the range where it could be funded, um, so that's good. 240-250 um, did not, um, and neither did 250 near the Harris Teeter over long. Um, although I talked to Kevin McDermott this morning, and he said that he's hopeful that 240-250, um, they also apply for a different pot of money, like highway safety improvement funding money for that one, and he felt like um, it was really competitive in that one. Um, I'm not sure how many years back on that, but just wanted to let you know that um, that that one, that the 151, 251 is looking uh, pretty positive. But we will keep you up in the loop on that um, as things move. And that's the short. One. Is that a short one? Is that Sorry. The 151, that project. Yeah. The circle. Yeah, that's a traffic circle. Pretty short. Yeah. And was the 240, 250? So, a circle also. It was also, yeah, all three of the Crozet ones were circles. VDOT's on a real circle 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> that, that's where you keep your orientation. <laughs> You would think it was cross the streets. All right. Anything else? Nope. Not great. All right. Thanks. Not safe. For <coughs> um, just while we're talking about transportation issues, to jump ahead to the sort of future agenda items, just real quickly, I actually happened to talk to Kevin today. Um, as you might recall, Gerald, um, the County Transportation Planner visited with us about a year ago. We said, hey, let's make sure to have them back every year prior to the board coming up with their new transportation priorities. That list happens and gets re-approved, I think, in like April kind of time frame by the board. So I talked to him about coming next meeting to review with us what are currently transportation priorities. You know, should we add anything else? Do, do we agree with those? Are there other projects we want to add to the list? So again, um, um, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin McDermott? Kevin. Sorry. So yeah, Kevin will be here at our next meeting um, to talk to you about this. Um, another agenda item we can take, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes maybe to chat about, and this is really the beginning of uh, what hopefully will be a series of discussions related to these, this idea of a community-driven implementation project. I handed out a copy of an email from Emily that I forwarded, um, I think both to the group as well as to the notify list um, a couple of weeks ago. And um, I, think the, I think the note was pretty self-explanatory. If you happen to click on the link, if you want more information, if you click on the link that's in the body of the email, it's actually um, a recording from the, the um, December board meeting. Um, and just listening to the board members discuss this idea gives you a lot of insight into what it might become. Um, but I think the general gist is the board was trying to, having a little bit of cash surplus for fiscal year 18, coupled with, for a long time, hearing CACs and others saying, why can't we get this little project done, or why can't we get this little project done? I think the board um, asked staff to come up with a proposal whereby they could take some of those funds, and I think they basically earmarked funds from a couple of different budget categories um, to create this pot of money. And the idea was initially, um, I think the board or the staff suggested about a $1.4 million pot that would be divided amongst the seven CACs um, staff has made an initial proposal to the board that was debated at the meeting back in December um, and sent staff away with some comments. Staff is coming back to the February board meeting um, with a revised plan for how this might work um, with the hope that the board would approve it in February. What's your expectation? Do you think that might happen or do you think the plan design will, will run for a while yet? I think at the end of the February 1st board meeting, we will have enough to roll out a program with. Um, if they have a few changes, we can do it. We can probably get started in two or three weeks, so you can probably have some details for your February meeting. Um, if they made a ton of changes, it would probably take us a bit longer. Um, and you would, it would probably be your March meeting before you would have sort of full details. But I, I'm, we're really hopeful that it will be February that you all can get and, uh, your heads around what the, what the criteria will be. And I think um, the gist is roughly, you know, I think staff has said, hey, let's make sure each AC gets at least 75 grand. But again, if you do the math, like I did in the columns or in the margins here, you know, that could be 200 grand uh, per CAC. Um, I think the idea is to have CACs come up with a prioritized list of ideas, um, submit that to staff or the board, I'm not sure who we're submitting it to, um, then that list would be sort of prioritized by the board and projects essentially would be awarded. Um, roughly, roughly is sort of how the mechanics would work. Um, even though a lot of this is still being developed, I thought it was a really good idea just to at least get the idea out so we could be thinking about what kind of projects might we want to recommend? Um, I have a sneaking suspicion that you know projects that are more, you know 
better thought out, ready to move, have a higher chance, may well have a higher chance of getting funded. So I was encouraging us to let's think about these things early and if there's some things we need to do to flush out some ideas so we're best positioned, um, um, you know, I'd encourage the group to do that. Um, again, I think roughly the timeline, as Emily said, is hopefully by early February the board would sort of finalize here's what the plan design would be, what kind of projects they, they are encouraging us to look at. Um, a rough timeline, I think, that was discussed at the last board meeting was sort of a February, March, we would go through the brainstorming of, gee, what might be on our list. Maybe April, May, we would meet with staff to sort of flush out some of those ideas and if there's issues with them, again, to try to, you know, make sure that the ideas we come up with are things that could get done or couldn't be implemented um, in the April, May time frame. June, July would be then for us to essentially rank and make a recommendation of, okay, here's Jose's projects we're, we're buying for. And then, you know, maybe by August, the board would decide. Um, I think the goal, this is fiscal year 2018 money, so I think the goal would be, um, you know, funds would be dispersed and projects would be done fiscal year 18, essentially second half of this year, beginning of next year. Um, I think the idea, and I think this is still being debated a little bit, um, you know, in terms of what kind of projects, obviously things that are sort of in that price range, you know, this is not going to fund the bridge across, the, you know, Looking Hole Creek for the Eastern Connector. Um, but I think they, they were um, encouraging projects that, you know, are sort of small, discrete, can get done, you know, essentially immediately. Um, or maybe projects that um, um, could and maybe engineering dollars to better define projects that would set them up for future, you know, future funding. So if there's projects that maybe haven't been well, well developed or conceptualized, but um, um, have been around in the community for a while and just never quite make it to the top of the list, I think there's things we can do with a little bit of money to, you know, better scope those out so that those projects are in a better, um, uh, better position. Um, that's sort of what I know. Um, I, thought, you know I don't know if there's anything else you would add to that, Emily, in terms of where the ideas sit and, and how this program might, you know, how it might look. Yeah, I, I, that, that pretty well covers it. Um, the only thing I would add is um, we're hoping that the um, that the process of coming up with that initial brainstorm can really bring in um, ideas from the whole community. Um, so not just you folks around the table, but um, but are there other things that folks have in mind that um, you know they, they don't um, you know they never make it to a capital project list, but it's a, it's a need that you know some people know is really important, um, and then and then have sort of a full list of all the ideas um, that are that are generated, um, and then do you know uh, we would probably uh, do a bigger. Um, as sort of a matter of course, we don't really advertise the CCAC or any of the CAC meetings in a, in a big way. Um, uh, so the thought is that we would do like a big push using our contacts um, in the, for the different areas um, to get a lot of new faces in the room and have, um, and have the whole community sort of be a part of the process. Um, and, then, and then I just said, you know, There'll be some scoping out. You know, if someone says we really need a community garden in Jose Park, um, there'd be that time in the late spring, early summer, where staff would work with um, one or two of you to sort of flesh out. Okay, well, you know, how big should it be? Or how many how many plots do we want to have? What's Jose Park board interested in making room for? Um, you know, get some parameters around it so that a cost could be put to it, and then staff would come back with a list of. Uh, some cost considerations for all the projects that are sort of under priority list, and then you guys could have another chance to look at it and say, okay, yeah, you know, given that that's going to cost four million dollars and we only have two hundred thousand, let's move on and look at something else. Um, so I don't have a ton of details. I'm sorry about that, but um, so that was one part I wanted to make sure that we emphasize that it's it'll be um, a place sort of a full community effort to come up with that list. Questions? I have a simple question. That is. There are two ways to approach this. One is we're going to get between seventy-five thousand and two thousand, two hundred thousand, and we do. We want a project that's done. The other is 
we want to initiate a project that can be used as seed money or show local involvement that might increase the likelihood of us getting the, this, this money that comes out of VDOT every year. Because if, if, because if it's the first, I don't want to touch a road myself. You know, that's way out of, out, of, out of the question. I have lots of ideas, but roads, no. I, we, 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 the car dominates anyway, but I just don't, don't think that's, that's reasonable. If it's seed money, then well, maybe we can do something to a road to start improving it so that eventually uh, VDOT would do so. so. So that's my question. Is it, are we looking for projects that actually could be used as, as seed money, or are we looking for projects that would be completed with the amount of money that we have allocated? That's one of the questions that the board is going to be talking about on February 1st. Um, our, my sense from the, if you watch that video, my sense is that it's, it, it could be either. Um, uh, my sense is also that the board is probably going to set it up so that it's not, um, it's not going to be a competition for more money. It'll be an allocation so that, you know, Crozet knows Crozet is going to have two and a quarter, for example. Um, don't, nobody write that down. <laughs> um, and then yeah. you, that way you can sort of figure out, okay, you know, if we know sort of how much money we're going after. Um, so let's the, adjust the, accordingly. I would, just, I would second that from the discussion I heard. It sounded like it's going to be both. That some people really like the ideas of small discrete projects that can go and get done. Others like the idea yeah. of let's let the community, you know, if there's material things that we need to get done, but we need to start, um, so I think they're going to let it open but for the community to say what's most important to you. The question is what kind of bias are they going to have? <coughs> yeah. Again, maybe we'll hear some of that when yeah. they finalize the program plan. I think the thing where you have to keep in mind, and it really relates to kind of seed versus completed project, this is a one-time shot. We have no guarantee that Board of Supervisors is going to allow uh, a tax rate on a continuing basis to generate surpluses. Sooner or later, people in the county will come back and say, cut our tax rate, and, and as opposed to generate a surplus. So I think we need to keep in mind this could be a one-time shot. And, and the board specifically said this is a one-time shot. Yeah. Maybe we'll do it again, but I assume this is a good idea. No, but, it, but one, when, when Gerald was here uh, last year, one of the things he pointed out when he was asking us what projects would we prefer, he said some of the, some of the winners in, in those competitions with the VDOT money were places where they had initiated work. And so if, if we could use it so that for the county it's a one shot thing, but use it for VDOT. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not arguing for that, I'm just saying that's a consideration. That's one item that the board did discuss related to that is um, there was a discussion about it'd be really great if CACs chose to use this money in a way that it could be leveraged with other money. So specifically, if it was used for a road project that could go grab um, revenue sharing dollars, for example, and you know, 100 grand of a board contribution turned into a 200 grand project, for example, and I think several board members really like that idea. So I think projects that, that you know, where there's a multiple effect in, ter in terms of being able to get other matching dollars, I think will probably be viewed favorably as well. Paul, you had a Well, I was, I was going to mention the lever leveraging part of the equation. So I don't mean to say anything. Um, what month were you thinking to do a call out to all your contacts to try to pull them to the CACs? What were you what kind of target per month? It depends on how much, when we get everything wrapped up. It, I think it would be somewhere in the March or April. Yeah. March or April. But then I do think we should use social media as a way to gather, you know, Tim's ability to gather input so we're really getting some feedback from the community as a whole. We have so many resources. We can get that up and going that it's appropriate to do so. We're not all, to discourage people from yeah, coming, but no, the reality I, is. I should have said that one of the things that we've talked about is having um, an online um, form for each of the CACs so that people could 
um, put in an idea if they can't attend a meeting um, in person. And then, so we would come to that first brainstorm meeting with, um, there's three lists of like capital projects that staff already sort of has. One is the master plan implementation list. One is the transportation priority list. Um, and the other is what we, we call this capital needs assessment. And basically, it's all the unfunded projects that are currently in the capital improvement program. So we would start with those three projects for Crozé, and then we would also give you the list of things that just came in online, um, you know, seven to 10 days prior to your whatever month meeting that is. Um, it, would, it would be nice if, <clears throat> as you were going through this exercise, that we established some consistent criteria for submission so that when we did look at things, we would be able to compare kind of apples to apples, you know, who's the benefit, whatever cost versus, you know, impact, whatever, um, and longevity, you know, is it a short-term thing? So it would be nice, whatever it is, that they decide on, because I mean, I think for a lot of this discussion right now is really premature. It would, it would be nice that whoever submitted something for our consideration is going to come from the community that they submitted it on a, on, a, on a formatted basis, so then it all kind of came in looking the same, and it would give us an opportunity to more objectively assess it. It sounds like you said staff is going to do something like that, or not necessarily? Uh, the big thing right now is that, um, you know, if you guys, if we just did a, a straight open brainstorm, you know, in a, in, a, in a meeting like this with 50 people from the community here, that we could get a whole bunch of ideas. Um, and, but that you all would be able to, um, that there would be a, a time for everyone to sort of throw everything out on the table, and then there would be, um, the next meeting maybe part of that meeting, a sort of a quick, okay, here are the things that we think people are actually really interested in, and that those that those priorities, that however many that is, would be the ones that we would then sort of stick more on the meat of, or more meat on those bones. Because um, the process of flushing these things out um, can be really big. Yeah. It, it can be really hard when you have a lot and you don't have a lot of Well, we only meet for two hours, so I'm, I'm seeing it take a lot, right. a lot of time so I think that's a good suggestion, whether whether the county does that for everybody else's projects, it's a good suggestion for us to try to encourage for our project at least so we can, you know, debate with them. Any other, um, I guess one, one thing I did say, because again, I don't think it's ever too early, um, you know, I've thrown out to you all that hey, based on this idea, that anybody have any ideas, um, I got three suggestions back from you all. Um, one was, generically sidewalk projects, you know, are there critical sidewalk projects around Jose um, that we should be focusing on or maybe buying for? Um, I think keep in mind, Emily mentioned there's existing lists of projects out there already, including a whole bunch in the implementation section of the master plan. I think we can clearly draw on any of those, but I don't think the board expects us to draw only from those. I think if there's somebody has a Great new idea tomorrow, <laughs> um, and, and you know we can flush that out and make sense. I think those can be considered as well. Um, so sidewalk project was one idea. Generically, just tree planting, you know, some kind of tree planting exercise, um, and then a third idea, and actually this was one that I suggested. Um, you know, we talked about improvements to the Crozet Square. I think. Over the last year or so, the county has finally realized that, oh, actually, gee, we, you know, the county owns all of that. Um, my suggestion was, would we submit that? And, and, and talking to Kevin McDermott, I don't think there's really been any work done meaningfully in terms of really smoothing out what a streetscape project there would look like. Um, so one suggestion I had was made as a potential project, again, just is, is would you you know, would we submit that? It's probably not going to be enough money to actually do that project, because i got to believe that's going to be, you know, half a million bucks, a million bucks, some large number. But I think but could, could we use it for engineering, yeah. could yeah. we use it for engineering dollars to scope out what's going to get done to then set us up for chasing V.Magic later? Uh, anyway, that's Those of us who did not respond, are we permitted to respond? Please, to again, I think we got yeah. time. Well, I, I've, I've called a lot of people who I interact with, mainly who walk on trails, 
what we're working on trails, what we're working on trails. And if you look at the master plan, it's like every, every community, every subdivision in here is supposed to be connected to the to downtown through these trails. And uh, it's not that expensive to do it, but it seems to me one of the issues is right right of ways. And, uh, and I think that county parks, uh, people would have some good ideas about that, particular ideas about where you can't do it and where you need. Uh, but um, also, I'd say bike trails, but that's that might be a very narrow portion of our population. <coughs> Does the Crazy Trail crew have a list of, gee, here's our <laughs> stuff we want to do? I mean, would they be somebody we could turn to? Yeah, to well, we have a list. We want to take the trails and make them look like they have it, like they look in this. Master plan. That's our goal. It's very simple. <laughs> but some of it is right away issues, and, and uh, it turns out that the developers, as, as developers are buying private property, they're happy to have a, tra a trail because they can advertise people who, who live on the private property that wasn't on the trail. They don't want to have a trail going in, in, in quote in their backyard. Okay, trails, any other ideas? Or you said it couldn't be the bridge over the whole creek, but could it be the elevated walkway over the gravel tracks? I think it could. Sure. Yeah, I think that, that, that could be, you know, that may yeah, be pushing, I and mean, I have no idea what something like that would cost again. I think that's, really, really that problem. could be on the list to consider. <laughs> I would think absolutely. Really again, that's I what I was told. Uh, oh, sorry, she's, you're talking about the pedestrian. I am talking about Oh, yeah, that would be that, yeah. In fact, the county actually has a bridge to go over Living Hill Street. So if you want to get that bridge built, you have to call uh, Dan, um, what name is it? Uh, Dan, Dan Mahan, and tell them that you heard there's a bridge there, why aren't they building it? <laughs> so <laughs> that draws a trailer. They have built the trails bridge? Huh? The trails bridge? There's a, there is a trail bridge planned to go right. over Whitney Hole Creek, a foot bridge to go over Whitney yeah. Hole Creek. It's not, the, it's not the vehicle, vehicular bridge that will allow the No, no, it's not that. It's just okay. a pedestrian. And the county owns it. It's sitting in a, in a warehouse right now. And it would cost a few hundred bucks to put the footings in, maybe a thousand or two thousand. So, I mean, so that, that, <laughs> so I would love to see that in the present yeah. any, any other suggestions for kind of projects? I do recognize what Costa suggested, that we need some way of evaluating apples to apples, but I think that's really sort of a second stage. I, I think one of the things that they really wish community involvement in, in this process we need something that um, elicits community involvement. Not just those willing to fill out a form, but people with ideas. Let's collect some of those people who are like me, too lazy to fill out a form and then occasionally have an idea of like, something four or five years. <laughs> I just think that would be a, a good first step to, to, uh, uh, to make public to the community at large or what it is that is coming up. Get whatever input we can. Again, this is, I think, our first step to doing that. But again, I agree that we want to go, you know, as far away as we can in the community. Um, any other suggestions from anybody as far as, you know, project ideas or kind of project ideas? I mean, sure, we get community association, right? Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's a very reasonable starting spot. Yep. I think that's a good point, not only CCA, but, you know, the Board of Trade, are there, are there other organizations within the community that we should be reaching out to, um, you know, that might have needs? Um, again, my sense was, it seemed that this was mostly earmarked more towards sort of capital kind of projects, bricks and mortar kind of stuff, gravel in the case of tails, not funding for programs. Was, was my assumption, so... Or planning dollars, because I was thinking Plan about it. Planning, planning dollars for capital, capital projects. Like a parking plan for Crozet? Ooh. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
the, the only the, the board has a policy where um, one-time funds, which are what surplus funds are called, um, can't be used for. They have to be used for one-time projects. So a, a program, the expectation would be that that's an operating continuing cost. So that wouldn't be the type of thing that the board seems pretty on the same page on that piece. But again, you know, I think Tim, your suggestion of a parking plan, you know, have a consultant put together. Okay, here's what makes sense. Here's what cost would be. Here's you know all the things we've talked about. And infinite, you know, that I. Every time you say downtown Rosé, right. parking is the next thing somebody says. Right. <laughs> Just like downtown Toronto. Right. Right. And having people have difficulty finding a parking spot. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. And I'm uh, sorry, now that the barbecue place is open. And, and, and I would say on place draws, this is a, unfortunately a spillover yes. parking lot. For it's not just that though. It's been happening. I mean, the church has the orchestra gone. practice. Mm -hmm. They all park <clears throat> here. Yeah. As, as, every, yeah. Every time we meet. As an that. aside on parking, I don't know if you heard it at the beginning. Pam came in, and there's a suggestion box with cards over there. If people have concerns or comments regarding the parking situation, she's asking folks to fill it out and leave a leave a note in the comment box for parking. Um, Allie, sorry. Oh, no, I was just That's agreeing with Jenny. It's hey, not just part of it. There's the park ticket. Right. Sure. Yeah, can you, you mentioned a limited meeting time, obviously. We only have two hours, right, to, to sit here and, and meet at these monthly meetings. Uh, and so I don't know if the expectation was to sort of bifurcate this, the community input, and have a separate meeting, something like with the downtown Crozet meeting or something like that. Uh, I mean, I, I wasn't able to go, but it sounds like that was a great success. And it might also be a way to kind of Channel, you know, instead, instead of just having a big piece say trees, you know, like maybe try to channel that either through, you know, poster board and say, you know, dividing it up through, you know, landscape design, streets and roads, neighborhood involvement, you know, capital projects, or even like a map, you know, put a sticky note here. What would you like to see as a way of, kind of channeling that, and without sucking up, you know, time, and then this board could be more winnowing down and kind of prioritizing and, and synthesizing some of that feedback. I like that a lot because I think we could use that to create a, where we could do some education about all the different groups we have or something where people don't just come and say trees and leave or it's not their neighborhoods that they say what they want and they leave or whatever it is. I think that, that might be a cool idea to build on that. It sounds like the it sounds like the downtown project was really oh, yeah. sort of efficient that way that everybody got their input and then the smaller group was able to sift through it and say, here are the themes, here's what we saw, and then that could kind of be a more efficient way of dealing with things. Mm -hmm. uh, again, sort of along those lines with and what Vietnam Ocasa said, I think if there was a subset of us that wanted to say, hey, <laughs> will help organize whatever it is in terms of taking suggestions, flushing them out, presenting them to the group. You know, I think that would be really beneficial. Um, my sense is, maybe I'm totally wrong, but I think projects that are well thought out, you know, and presented well, I, I think have to have a better chance of, of Winning dollars and, and wow. absolutely, but I think it'd be neat to if we could see what the community gives us if it's in the same vein of things that we're thinking of. Sure. Things that are in the master plan, they don't maybe realize it's there, but then you could say we have this many people turn out in person, and this many people answer through social media or CAC website or whatever to be, that said they this was their number one choice. That would be pretty neat to be able to do that. <clears throat> as long as somebody claims the idea. We can always go back to them and ask them to elaborate on it if it doesn't have a lot of meat to it. So, I mean, that's another thought. Right. By that vetting process, whatever it might be, they put a note up and says, hey, I want a tree in the middle of Crazy Avenue. Do you think that's a great idea? Well, why do you think this is a good idea or something? You know, I think it may be projects that have champions always right. stand a better chance. But there chance. are a lot of folks that, like, use it, may have ideas but just can't don't know if it's a good one or if anybody else is interested in it and may not develop it properly to where we get it. And so maybe that's an opportunity if we see something like have somebody champion it or mentor it to its potential. Any other suggestions for the process or well, ideas? I was just thinking, uh, you know, in, if this is going to be a one-time fund, to get some residual 
um, income out of it. Uh, we're still in the process of designing the downtown area and buildings. And I know with like Alamo County Schools, they uh, sort of leased out uh, solar you know, companies to put panels on the schools, sell the energy back to the schools. Um, and if we created something where we, I think, you know, probably get some matching funds uh, through someone um, to maybe have that as part of a, a design um, that can keep income coming to us for. And you're saying specifically like solar or just a general idea of do something that could be. Something green, person. something that. that that uh, something renewable, something that puts us on the, on the radar, on the map of uh, a little place doing something that's pretty cool, and all of a sudden maybe it generates a little a little spark. Any other ideas, suggestions, comments? Um, is anybody in this group? Well, does the group like the idea of having sort of a subcommittee to push us along and flush it out? And if so, does anybody want to serve on that? So I guess two questions there. I'll serve. This is a good idea. You're not done yet. <laughs> I'm done. You bet. He's done. No, I said come first today. Right. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> so wait, I, I asked for. I, <laughs> 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 I just want to make sure. I can't be no, no. fixed up. I don't want to volunteer and be leaving. No, I'm um, 14 minutes. 14. I, again, so. Very good. Does anybody else think that's a good idea? And if so, and also it is a good idea. Uh, read and polish suggestions for the people. All right, so we got Phil and John so far. Is that good? Sure. Anybody else? Obviously, anybody else wants to join, I think, feel free. And I would encourage anybody from the community who's interested or has a good idea wants to join. There's your two guys. Just be careful if you get more than three right. CCAC together, but I think. You know, Dan and myself would be willing to help, I'm sure, with whatever questions right. or any information we can get. But that's, good. To that's, a good, that's a good reminder, and so I'd say is if we do have three or more, we just need to notice when you get together to chat. But I think starting with two is probably a good idea for that reason, if nothing else. Um, okay, well, unless anybody else has anything else, I'd just say stay tuned on that. It sounds like we may not have completely clear guidance for February, but maybe we'd be thinking more about a March meeting to have it more advertised widely and have a more uh, a bigger brainstorming session. Yeah. I think. Um, we'll have an orientation. Part of the plan will be an orientation for all the CDC members um, before we kick anything off in earnest. So I think it would definitely be March before we would have like a big public push on things. Because um, we would want to make sure that we had all the program details kind of fully fleshed out before we did that. Um, but we know you guys, so go easy on us. <laughs> <laughs> I will plan to send an update um, on just sort of how things generally went, um, depending on how late it goes, February 1st or February 2nd. Um, and then I'll send more information as it's sort of finalized. But I'll, I'll, let, you have, I'll let you know what happened on the first um, in sort of the general sense. Or you can come to the meeting. Or you can watch the meeting at your house. <laughs> All right, great. Thanks, everybody. Um, next on the agenda, um, we talked last time about continuing our discussion about you know, regional focus areas and priorities. And I thought a discussion specifically, you know, we talked before about um, you know, having to do regional like liaisons. Um, I passed out two sheets. One is the one you've seen repeatedly throughout this whole discussion in terms of our current regional liaisons. Um, and uh, another is a map. 
where I tried to identify on maps so people can see it, what I think we mean by these different regions. Um, what I was thinking is we could perhaps have two discussions. One initially talking about the regions, making sure everybody's clear, do we like those regions, do we want to change the, the area? Um, then sort of secondly, okay, we're going to have regional reps, but what does that mean? What do we expect those people to do? We talked about that a little bit in the past. And then lastly, maybe quickly go through each region and say, hey, do people have specific ideas for each of those areas? As, you know, what's the priority for those areas? Um, so again, real quickly, go, looking at the map, I'm, again, I'm looking at the map and that list, these regions are, I tried to take them, we roughly had sort of a northeast, southwest, and downtown before. Um, and I basically tried to refer to the master plan and how the master plan had grouped different parts of Crozet. Um, and that's what I tried to represent on this map here. But again, that's for debate if we want to change or move it back. I'm actually just looking at the map, one suggestion, because I'm in the north. And I think I might be, does anyone else live Jose North or North of Jose North like I do? <laughs> I don't know anyone, you do. Yeah. <coughs> but I'm thinking like generally the way this, this part of the growth, the defined growth area may fit better or with the downtown because many people that live in this area walk downtown. I think that their, their interests would be very similar as far as it, you know, sidewalks or connectivity and those kind of things, parking. But, you know, I'm leaving. I'm in place to hunt. <laughs> and so I don't know if anyone else wants to take on the north separately or how I just that was a brief suggestion because these other group, these other areas are bigger. Just maybe we should consider that. Because I'm not sure that in this defined group area there's. You know, it's pretty stable. The sidewalks were mostly just done, except for that piece from St. George up to the Broadway stop, which does need some work. But. And, and I think that's a good point. And I think clearly the way the master plan sort of divided up the town, it's really the east and west are the two segments that have a lot of the big residential growth. <laughs> right. Um, the downtown is obviously a commercial center center along 240, and then there's sort of everything else which is roughly defined as north, and the, uh, I think what I'm calling south, or what we're calling south here, is basically the Crozet Avenue corridor south. Um, so anyway, that's, that's roughly, any other thoughts on what the same, is that um, so it depend upon whether somebody else on the committee that wants to pick up the Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't think it would be correct to have more than one person on the committee. I, I'll, I'll, I'll start serving the liaison. Right. Uh, yeah, no, I think... I'd well the time on this about the liaison should be doing. Yeah, I think absolutely. I think, for example, like in downtown, there are several of us who said, hey, we're really interested in sort of downtown stuff. So I think that applies for, for all of them. So anything else as far as the actual, other than maybe combined in the north and downtown, any other suggestions about the, the areas, the way they're shown? Well, like you said, there's just a lot of growth down the east going on out that way. And, uh, and then there's the stream that comes down that kind of divides the two sides between Western Ridge and, and uh, what's being developed. So, you know, you could have two, two folks yeah, yeah. doing that as well. So, if you're north and east and south and east, and the region, and north east and south east, or just two, or just two people, people. multiple right. people. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe the right. west would be divided. Yeah. Maybe the west yeah. would be the same way because there's a lot more north and south. Yeah. South and south. I have, I have several times have had people from Old Trail contact me saying, who represents Old Trail's interests? 
and of course I say, well, broadly, CCAC, so come. <laughs> but uh, again, I think what they're really seeking is somebody who either sits on this group or is active in this group that is, has sort of an old trail interest in might get comments. I'd just like to say that, you know, historically for the CCAC South, didn't have a definition like this, and South really meant Route 250. And East and West was East and West of Crozet Avenue. But I don't necessarily think it's a good idea to make, I mean, the real jeopardy in development, it's not East, it's not West, it's 250. And it seems to me that there ought to be uh, sort of one person, two people, whoever, the committee, but you ought to think of South as going from Yancey Mills to Fox Chase, and that that's one zone that you're going to try and monitor, um, you know, consistently. Really, the residential east and west half, that's, you know, that's pretty much over. Um, there, we, don't, we don't expect more surprises, but we do expect constant trouble out of uh, 250. And that's what south has traditionally meant, is 250. Also, the, the fact that uh, we have a master plan map, which sort of stops on 250, sort of means, well, we shouldn't pay any attention to what's going on south of 250. My sense is, no, that, that impacts us. You know? Yeah, I don't think we can limit ourselves to the growth areas now. Because it's the margins of the growth area where we're getting a lot of pressure right now. I agree with the last few comments from Mike and Phil. You're saying wanting like closer to corridors, like a, the 240 corridor, the 250 corridor. That, uh, you can almost do you can do the south just like you say along 250 over here you can almost make that a central something in there because that it feeds in uh, you, know, you can almost make that central and then have that part as the east if you're gonna, I mean, or you divide it up and just have make sure you have two people in a particular area but I think that the south is a good idea I mean, you're gonna break it off like that we're not constrained by anything specific, so I think it's what we make of it, what makes sense to uh, where the pressures are. And I think that's a great point. Yeah, I mean, previously we've never put, you know, outlines on it before. We've always had this nebulous idea of who's keeping an eye on what. And, you know, for, for me, I've been in charge of the South for two years now. And, you know, I was entirely sure of, of, you know, it's basically south of Brownsville. Well, I'm not even a lot of potential at the interchange with some of the stuff that's happening, right? And, um, the gas station there and everything that a lot of discussion we've had have, has been about something that's not even part of this map. Right? So, and the other thing to remember, I hate to bring it up again, but if the bridge on, over, the vehicular bridge over Looking Hall Creek ever is built and that connector road is done, that opens up a huge amount of potential development in that area. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, when I put together a map like this, I, I wasn't at all intending this to be any hard, dark lines, even though there's hard, dark lines. <laughs> <laughs> I was mostly just trying to use it to generate this discussion so if somebody says, no, yeah, I'll be a Western rep, you can say, well, what, what does that mean? You know, um, again, I think we all serve all the community. Um, and, and again, this is only for the purpose of what we're calling a regional rep, which we haven't even decided yet what those people do. Um, so I, again, I think we had some really good suggestions. Mike, I think you several people, if I'm, if I'm just sort of to feedback what I'm hearing from the group, it sounds like we clearly want the southern area to focus on 250, yeah. Um, we, and, and that could be just east and west of Crozet Avenue, and so south totally just becomes a 250 corridor. Um, maybe combine north with downtown, and probably in all instances, the areas outside <laughs> are also part of what that regional reference Okay, don't, draw, don't, draw, don't draw a perimeter, that's all. Well, you notice I didn't on, yeah. there were big dark lines. Right. Right. Well, zoom it out just zoom out a little bit. Just put little arrows. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're, 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 you're,
you're putting structure to it, so now it's not nebulous, so we, you kind of know who's, what you're in charge of. If you're well, when you say Grizzly Avenue, that makes a lot more sense to me as a divide. Like what Mike's suggesting, as much as West and East, South of 250. And then if you have more than one person willing to take that on, they're pretty stable areas, but it could be more than one person. Do we really need to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I want to back up. It seems to me that, that we all, as, as a body, discuss pretty much all the problems equally. I don't see a huge advantage to gerrymandering the area in a way that um, it sort of splits up the discussion. The original idea was if the citizen came to us outside of us meeting here, you know, and said, I have a concern about something happening here, here, or here, then we could point them to, you know, whichever one of us was supposed to be in charge of here, here, or here. And, you know, granted, that's never happened and nothing's come of it at all. But that, that was the original idea. I can, I can certainly see that. On the other hand, if a citizen approached me, say, from my side of the tracks and said, <laughs> I have a concern, I could bring that rather than directly to somebody else who then has a, you know, that's another step in the communications process. Usually that results in a lesson quality of communication. I think another idea that we had about doing that was when we have multiple projects happening, we have community meeting and all the steps that go away from that is to be an assistance to the chair. And it doesn't have to be someone who's in that area. It could be whoever stepped up to do it, but it is helpful to have someone track that project. And when there's lots of things happening, maybe that's helpful to Dave to have. He's not tracking for projects that are kind of live all at one time, but it doesn't have to be. There was also help in the store that when there were lots of developments coming in to have people paint, particularly when the county, after 2008, when the county was understaffed, that people were looking on the county website for development coming up in the stream because we weren't getting the time notices. And we do have a lot in the pipeline, so I do think it's good to know when those things start, when there's movement on the ground, what's something to do that are approved but not. One other thing that I recall in a prior meeting was, you know, we've heard several times, we've often struggled with homeowner association contacts, mm -hmm. and as we're wanting to mm -hmm. either communicate something or get input, um, I think we've talked many times about, gee, it'd be really nice if we had a current up-to-date list of homeowner association contacts, and I think somebody in a prior meeting had discussed, well, Maybe that's something to read, you know, if we do do this, maybe the, those people could <coughs> sort of be a liaison or reach out or at least figure out what are the neighborhoods and, you know, who are homeowner reps to talk to. Um, so that, I think, was another idea for having something like this. Again, I, take, I absolutely take your point about we don't want to, oh, this is not a intended to be an overly formal process. This is just to give, I think, a couple of us you know, wearing hats in our neighborhood to say, hey, I'll try to keep an eye out on certain things. But again, it's up for the group to decide. Or well, we could just refer, when everybody wants to know who they rep, just refer to Mark. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, my suggestion to you was a toll on that footbridge. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> as, a, as one who experienced, David, the situation of trying to track homeowner operations, uh, associations, I wouldn't spend a minute on it. Uh, the county's never been able to keep up with it. When we started looking to raise money for the library, we thought, aha, good place. The, the change of officers in these homeowner associations without getting it ingrained that they have to notify somebody, you, you have a hard time even tracking down who's in charge in certain organizations. And we finally just gave it up as a, an opportunity for fundraising. It's, it's a time-consuming project to keep up with it. Okay. I mean, the alternative could be, too, is you strengthen the other aspects here of your assignments, take away the regions, and then if you didn't want to spend the time on 
homeowners association, you could have a couple of people dedicated to that, if that's what you want to do. That's another mm -hmm. thought to make that fall in line with the master plan. I remember in the past, we divvied up according to not um, geographical areas, but just interest areas. So Beth's always been the school person and the sidewalk person. And so she's tracked it because she has a personal interest in it. She would raise, you know, points at the meeting because she's been tracking it and say, oh, hey, I want to let you know this is coming up in the schools, or I followed up with the sidewalk. So it was really individual members taking on a specific interest area that they would then do the digging or do some research and report back to the group versus you know, just the, the president or the chair, you know, getting bombarded with all because your name's in the paper, so everybody goes to you and you can't track everything. So it was more spreading the, the workload amongst the members in between monthly meetings was that you could, if you had an interest in a certain area, you would keep track or do the research or contact the county and then come back to the group and say, oh, hey, I did a little digging on my own and this is what I found. And, and we still have that. If you look at the list on the website and when I've circulated, it's, it's sort of both. We have yeah. those, you know, topical, you know, focus areas, services, schools, economic development, parks and green space, infrastructure, and then planning, you know, following development projects. So we have those. We've also always had, you know, some regional areas, but frankly, we haven't done a whole lot with those regional, you know, regional reps. And I guess that's the question: is do we want to or not? And if so, what? Um, um, again, we don't. We can make it as formal or informal uh, as we want in terms of what we ask any of those folks to do or just to have a name associated with West and they sort of, you know, West, East, whatever, they sort of help keep an eye out on, on development projects, but it's really up to the group. It sounded like from what Alan said earlier, we're going to get more updates, hopefully, in the future of projects and how they're coming along so that we don't have to have somebody knocking us or calling somebody and finding out what's going on or when it's going to happen. That's what I heard you say. That's our goal, yeah. Yeah, so that would help with those types of projects that would be more special interest uh, with schools and things like that. Mm -hmm. We need to kind of keep an eye on them. We're not going to report them. Um, so I guess we're here in. So we need like a 250 South. Only. <laughs> Regional focus is what I'm hearing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that seems to be the one that everyone, you know, is really where a lot of the concern is, right? I don't know if we want to. Uh, I mean, clearly, you know, that's a concern in terms of development impacts. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'd say I think we deeply had concern with development impacts east and west. And I guess it also, my only other thought would be, this doesn't have to be all just sort of defensive, right? right. You know, we're thinking about this whole thing of defensive and what the developers doing. This could also be, you know, positive, right? right? What are, if, if you're coming up with ideas for projects that we just talked about, maybe that's the regional, you know, it could be, One of the things I like about the regional liaison, I thought at the time, we might actually see if one of us is in charge of, like, like the West, is only like four, four major subdivisions. They all have homeowners. Here. Well, if the people who are handling the West live in the West, and, or in the East, rather, and can take the responsibility of finding out who the homeowner's leadership is, and actually make a brief presentation at the homeowner's meeting, then I think we become a more visible uh, force in the, within, the, within our region. So not necessarily a, a tracking mechanism of, of homeowners associations, more just, hey, if there's a couple of obvious key homeowners associations, so you should show up and be like, hey, what's on? 
Hey, Phil. How many people, <clears throat> how many people come to your HOA meetings? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I've lived there seven years, I've only been to three of them. <laughs> but that's because they're boring, there's nothing going on. Sorry. Uh, the, the CCAC is going to make a presentation, it's going to ask for some information. I, 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 I just don't think it would hurt. To, to I, I, I mean, I bring that up respectfully, I didn't yeah, know if I'm going to put yeah. you on the spot, really. Uh, our HOA meetings are, are invariably are attended only by the board members. Oh, no, and even I hate going to them and I'm on the board. So I mean I think getting HOA meetings and neighborhoods to, to attend anything with a you know a guest like you would be more power to you if you get them to go. Well the fact is even if even if only four or five people in your neighborhood went, if they're the people in power in the neighborhood, some of them might not even know what the CCAC does. Go for it. I I mean I think you know I see one of my my neighborhood members here. You know, we never have anybody at our HOA of any quality. And it's something I see throughout the county and yeah. everywhere. It, it's true. It, it, it's hard to get people oh. interested. In <laughs> well, you don't do it at the quarterly meeting. You do it at your annual meeting when you've got, hopefully, two people. <laughs> You're kidding. I mean, I see, I see HOAs all over the county. They don't go. They don't vote either. We've got 57 homes, and at the annual meeting we'll have 35 homes represented. Everybody vote to raise dues and get people to show up. Mm -hmm. that's, that's no, it. And that's not, necess that's, that's not necessarily the same with all the homeowners associations yeah. either. I mean, you're talking about one. I mean, we've got another one here. We've got, you know, John. I'm, I'm talking just Davis. very, very broadly, looking at yeah. dozens of around the yeah. county, yeah. just well, as a general rule. There, there are there are a few strong HOAs that at least the annual meeting get a good turnout. But like Highlands, where I live, there are five HOAs within Highlands, wow. which is nuts. And we try, I was on the board for my section of Highlands, and I go to the meeting, and there were four people there. We had a few proxies, but we had to defer it another month so that the percentage to approve things went down and get more proxies, and then we, you know. So it's, and I think that's more typical. I, I hate to be cynical. I was on the board of Corey Farms HOA. That's very active. Yeah. And it's one of the good ones. Western Ridge, I think, tends to be pretty decent. The three times I went. <laughs> Just depends <laughs> upon if you want to raise money or the half of it. Raise your dues or anything else. They you know, get a lot of interest. They're not. Well, I'm not trying to jump us into the next topic. Kind of I am. But um, I, would, I think that we should consider how many new members you might have coming on and going through all this. I think it's something we needed to do for a while, but there's going to be um, people who may not step up and it may sort itself out like it has in the past where people didn't first attend the fall where, I mean, it just always has kind of worked out that people share some, you have, you're going to be having downtown always and it's like, you know, schools, you know, we're losing two people. We picked up one, and I think you'll get another one. I think mean, I just think it'll. I just wonder how much time you want to spend when you have new members coming on that need yeah. to get plugged in. Well, I think there's two issues. One is, do we want to have regional reps, and is it yeah. worthwhile? If a and B, who's going to serve on those? So I was hoping we at least finish the first discussion, knowing that yeah, the names on the list would change. Right. Um, so again, I'm hearing, I'm, here, I'm still sort of hearing a 50-50. Do people still feel like it's worthwhile having nominal sort of regional reps? Or do we think that since we've not really been doing a lot with that, that's not when our group worthwhile and we should focus more on focus areas? Yeah. Or leave it the way it is and not be I don't think we really, if, you don't, if we don't know what we're doing as a regional head, then I think it's hard to say whether we should keep it or not. You know, I think when we no, I mean, I, you know, we're assigned that. We're, do we do we know exactly what we're doing on in a particular reason? We've kind of talked about HOA, you know, community keeping track of things, but that's just been a very loose concept. I mean, if it's if it's not much more than that, is it is it worth keeping? If we want to define it more and say, okay, some of this, some of these interest areas may be folded into the region or focused there, then maybe that's an opportunity to say, yeah. We, we can keep it as a, uh, 
And every time there's a big project, someone is passionate enough about it to kind of take it up. And generally, it's the people that live closest to it or, or are impacted by it the most. So my feeling is that these, these give a little bit of a false sense of purpose, really, and um, that isn't really there. And I don't, I mean, I think we're, our time is precious. And we don't want to waste it. Let me kind of piggyback on that and a little bit with what Martin was saying too. Crozet has grown, but we're not, we haven't gotten that big yet. And this is the Crozet Community Advisory Committee. It's not the East Crozet, South Crozet, whatever. And I think we all have to, and I've seen it, because I'm one of the people going off because I'm timed out, is, so I've been around a while. You see it, and issues come up, and it doesn't matter if I live in Highlands or where I live. If it impacts Crozet, then I am going to be invested in that issue. And I think when we start segmenting too much, you lose a little bit of that broad community identity. That's my two cents. And just if I may, one last thing. I, I like the idea that the functional model sort of came up in response to something. It wasn't you know, something superimposed uh, because it sounded like a good idea, but just it, it really arose in response to, to me. And to me, that's what all of it. It hasn't cost me anything to be on it, to be a liaison or on any of the committees. So we spend more time talking about this issue <laughs> yeah, we than it's spent by being the liaison <laughs> about the representative person in the area. That speaks to something as well. <laughs> Again, I think everything I've heard is that it's just traditional. Right, yeah. And then, frankly, my intention with this whole discussion was to say, are we going to do something with it? If not, what's the point? Which is, I think, sort of what Ben was saying. Uh, I think we feel good about having names by list, but, um, I mean, it is on the website. So, you know, I guess it could be a point that if somebody wants to contact the CCAC, that they could contact those people. But I guess I'd ask, has anybody ever had that happen? I mean, I think generally if somebody wants to contact the CCAC, they either show up here or I'll, I'll get an email. Um, I, mean, I think the downtown is a little bit because that's, right. that's the group as a whole, too. Yep. I mean, that one, I think the downtown, if there's any difference or separation, it's probably downtown and 250. Yeah, right. It seems like better or better or like downtown development or whatever, whatever it is. It's like it's an interest area and not a regional segregation area mm -hmm. that has a line. And, and we're all concerned with each. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, I see those yeah. as the two biggest mm -hmm. areas of concern right now, probably. But I think John's point about it, if it arises, and it's important. You're going to be engaged no matter where you live in the general area. I think you make a motion to get rid of it. Do you, do you want to get rid of? Can you? Do you want to get rid of like all of them, north, east, south, and west, or do you want to include downtown and leave downtown as a functional area as opposed to a geographic area? Well, we also have oh, I, I, I think that's what. I mean, I, that that's kind of what I'm hearing. So maybe you've got you've got the maybe Route 250 downtown, you know, development, something like that, and then disperse with the rest of the regional division. Okay, but we do have non-regional ones there. And, have, and, and other non and, and the other functionaries. I'm not saying get rid of all the other ones. I'm it's saying not, just not replace the replace your uh, your regions with those two. So you're saying get rid of the directional ones. Mm -hmm. Directional. I mean, get rid of the directional. Keep the, keep the functional. Keep the functional. It's like economic development is listed here, and I mentioned this today last time because it's something that will impact Rose in this group. You've got a huge piece of industrial prospect property where active visible bio used to be, which is undergoing hazardous waste remediation. When that remediation is done, you have probably 20 to 25 acres of industrial property right along 240, immediately adjacent to Western Ridge and everything else, that's subject to development. So it's going to be something that we need to monitor and watch. They're kind of trees out of today, 
we made a proposal to that, and so it's uh, kind of the same movement. The, the last thing I would add is, again, along the lines of this discussion, I think we, you know, when we're charged with helping implement the master plan, if you look at the master plan, the one priority area that's called out and that is a focus priority area is downtown. So sort of along well, the lines... Well, the entry corridor. They talk about entry corridors, right, specifically in the master plan, which is what yeah. we consider 250. 250, so if you have those two... Right. So I guess that's what I'm saying. Replace that group the discussion that we're talking about is sort of aligned line that we have with... Yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion well. that we align more consistently with the master plan that we do functional areas to include downtown and the entry corridor 250 area and we dispense with the north and southwest for the directional separation. All right. Do I have a second? Mm -hmm. Any other discussion on that? So again, uh, we're going to leave the rest of the functional areas as they are. We'll have downtown to get the corridor. Any other discussion? Comments from anybody? Yeah. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Opposed? Yeah. Okay. I mean, so. You pick what slide? Bother to spend all this time. Well, we 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 finished it off. Uh, we we yeah. were, uh, you we know, it's not something that was of no cost. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't matter. So you didn't have to think about it. Okay. It was already dead. And this was easy one way. You can always come back to me. Oh, it will. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, time to move on. Um, so based on that, let's move on. Um, I mentioned after that discussion, I was going to add one new item and. That is, um, there's a one page <coughs> handout about um, the a program that the Virginia Festival of the Book is doing here at the library on May, March 22nd. Um, Jane Polo, the director of the Virginia Center of the Book, uh, reached out to Tim and approached <coughs> him, us, yeah. <laughs> to uh, ask. Um, both the CCA and the CCAC to, um, I guess, be a supporter or a sponsor or what's the word, a uh, host of this event. Um, it's really just a show of support and really they're just looking for community, uh, community organizations to use our communication networks to get the word out about this program. Um, the, uh, it looks like it's a couple hour program, 6.30 to 8, uh, Wednesday, March 22nd called Building and Loving Where You Live. Um, there are two <coughs> authors that are speaking and it's being moderated by uh, Brian Wheeler. Um, and, and the focus will be on developing one's home and community, which is why she reached out to Crozet in particular, seeming to be a community that has focused on that over the decades, uh, and to the CCAC and the CCA as organizations that would be interested in posting a discussion on such a topic. Um, and, and again, I guess the request specifically is, are we happy to show support and be a host? Um, thoughts, discussion? I was going to ask. Uh, it would not replace our meeting. I think this is. I think this is um, I think this is, has to be the fourth Wednesday, but it's on the 22nd. So the, bad, the bad doesn't work to get to the third Wednesday on the 22nd. Right. <laughs> it would be before that. Right. <laughs> so, no, I don't think it would place it. But it would be, CCA has already signed on as a host. It's a, I also see it as an opportunity for letting the community know about the organization to a group who probably hasn't ever really known the organization exists. Because there would be a whole different crowd that comes to this than has come to a CCA or a CCAC meeting. So this would be an opportunity for you guys to have your little one-page handout, have some members here to talk about it. Um, yeah, so I think it works both ways. Right. Like we're helping out at the event. We're You're the host. Here. You get to sign what the pictures are on the wall, right? <laughs> <laughs> the hosts get to stand up and say, like, two lines. Right, right. What do people think? We can do this more as we want, or we can do I'm just going to ask for a show of hands yeah. to support to be a host. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Should we advertise it as a meeting since we're talking about community? 
the things that we talk about. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that falls under FOIA or not because it's building and loving where you live. As long as you're not talking about things that happen, I'm sorry. specific things for Jose, it should not be a for you. Okay. It's not a public meeting, right? I would, I would think that would be. Okay. People talking about books. Right. Okay. Well, talking about the community in general, not, yeah, yeah. Not, not about where should the road like be. Like a, a book, 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 book discussion is not for you. Right. right. Yeah. right. Exactly. It's not a public body. Right. Yeah. There's going to be no public decision. Yeah. 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 No decision. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you everybody for that. Uh, we'll be a host and I'll be in touch with uh, Jay. Thanks, Jen, for raising that. Um, I guess the next thing on the agenda, John was going to talk a little bit about um, member appointment and officer elections. We have several people whose terms are up on um, the end of March. Yeah, I, I went back through, I went to the uh, county website and pulled it straight off of there. Those whose terms expire, when I say 2017, that means the end of March 2017. So it's an April to March uh, term. Um, those expiring this coming March are Alice Lucan, Mary Gallo, John McKeon, Ted Bassett, John Savage, Alice Marshall, and Mike Kunkel. All right? Three people. Mary, Beth, and myself are no are not eligible for any further terms. For the other four people, Alice, John, Alice Marshall, or Lisa, and Mike Conkle, if you wish to serve another term, then you are eligible. But you need to go through the application process, which means going to the county website. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the link, but I think if you look at boards and commissions or something like that. If you go to uh, albemarle.org slash boards, that's the application and URL. Should lead you to the application that way. But if you do not apply, then it, the, it will be assumed that you do not have an interest uh, in serving any longer uh, on the uh, committee. Um, just for your information, next year, uh, those expiring are Kim Gunther, Martin, Costas, James, Dean, Leslie Burns, Dave, and Phil Best. And to the best of my knowledge, Kim Gunther and Phil Best, I'm looking here real quickly, I think that, oh, and Leslie, Leslie are timed out at that point they will not be eligible the rest of you you don't have to do anything this year we're glad to have you continuing next year but it's uh, it uh, you'll that'll be the kind of the changeover by having a limit on number of terms that anyone can serve gets a reasonable turnover in the membership of this committee and it always helps to have new people coming in who may look at something, they may have different experience, backgrounds, whatever, and it, and it kind of refreshes things as we go along. So for those of you whose terms are expiring in 2017, I would ask you to please consider, and if you want to continue and you're eligible, please apply. Uh, the second thing is, and I'm gonna be kind of arbitrary with this, we need for next year, a chair, a vice chair, and a secretary. And those are to be um, elected probably at the end of the March meeting uh, so that they can begin to transition into that. Um, and I am arbitrarily putting myself as chair of a nominating committee, and I'm going to ask Beth, since she has no dog in the fight, uh, for future years if she would work with me on that. So if there are any of you willing to serve as either chair, vice chair, or secretary, please let me know or let Beth know. And, um, or, you know, if you, but if you're gonna nominate somebody else other than yourself, please check with them and make sure you're willing to serve. <laughs> but uh, other than that, we would, I would appreciate that. Um, we did it last year and it seemed to work out pretty well. 
um, that way. So well, one thing I'll throw out for him work, and I've been a part of other committees that have done this, is that there, there's some type of succession planning that's done prospectively. In other words, that the vice chair, whoever accepts vice chair would be considered being chair the following year so that they can be mid board and be a part of the process so that we don't go through new people because you need some of that historical perspective. So in other words, if you're chair, you're vice chair, then it's presumed that next year you're going to be the chair and, and we have some kind of succession yeah. round. Yeah. This year, unfortunately, and, and in the past, that sort of worked here. But this year, Dave, um, can continue to be on, but Mary can't, and Mary's the vice chair. So we do not have anybody. She was kind of appointed as yes. in a scramble to, right. yeah. <laughs> to just kind of. Well, you can sure always. Really. <laughs> yeah, but I, I would hope, and, and who knows, it could be one of you could say, I'm willing to be chair if so and so is vice chair, so that you know, you know you're going to do a year and somebody else is going to be moving on up. That may work well. I agree. It's a great idea. The Rotary Club I'm in. I mean, you have vice president, president elect, president, past president, etc. You just move through the chairs. So it makes it, I'm sure the Lions Club does the same It takes about six years to get through it all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it provides for a very orderly transition. Yeah. Right? And it's a great idea. Thank you for mentioning that. So if you all would be thinking about it, I bring it up now in January. We need to take action in at the end at our launch meeting. So that gives everybody a little time to think about it and decide if you wish to step up or reach out to somebody else that you think could be one of those positions. Please feel free to do so. Yeah, and I was just going to make a plug for that is we clearly will have several open seats. So. Um, you know, we should think about who else is in the community who would be good to join us um, and encourage them, please, <laughs> to, uh, to apply because um, we will have open seats and we're always looking for them. I mean, there's going to be some, you know, big shoes to fill here, but, uh, well, the other thing I would say, and I'm going to add this to it because James was good enough to step in this year to take over the secretary, I think. I hope that somebody else can, is willing to do it because, as James has found, when Tim was doing it, you have the same thing. It's very hard to be an active participant in the meeting and you're taking the minutes as well. So, <laughs> you're too quiet, James. <laughs> 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 officers. Um, I think we're actually through and ahead of time. I know Jenny said she had a couple of things she wanted to... Well, I, could, I wanted to um, just mention this because there were some numbers that came up. We had a joint session with the board um, today at four and we were looking at a small area plan um, for 29. It's actually, it's basically around the section of 29 where Rye Road um, where the great, the separate, great separated interchanges, going over to the river, Berkmar Drive. Um, I don't know how far down 29. Right, it's sort of like it captures those Rio roads, like so Fashion Square Mall, and like a couple of those properties across there, um, but nothing really further south than that. Okay, so it, it is a very small area plan, and that's what it's called. It is a small area plan, so. That's appropriate. I thought I'd mention some numbers. There's consultants that have been working on this, so it's the second time that we've been given this is more of a final stage. Not the final stage, but they're getting to the final stage of phase one and still trying to get some of their projections and numbers sort of figured out. Um, when we had a nice presentation today, I thought I'd mention some numbers that they threw out. Um, that are just things we talked about that have come up before and just sort of let our people soak those numbers in. 
Um, this consultant group gave a number of 2,800 units in now Marl and Charlottesville together. And we actually asked for clarification if it was county and city together over the next 20 years. That's their projection. Um, and they said that was based on regional, um, a regional forecast. So 2,800 units over the next 20 years. So they're not calculating anything in the pipeline there. That's units to come. And then another number that they talked about was by the year 2035, they expected um, 48,000 people, new people in Charlottesville and Elmer. So I just wanted to mention those numbers to you because if you take the county's multiplier and you put it on in the units, not counting what we have in the pipeline, you know, I don't, I'm not sure where all those people are going to live. So when you say units, is that could that be a multifamily, single family? It's units. a unit units. that houses people. 2,800 units, and that's Charlottesville and Elmer. That's okay. what they're forecasting in the next 20 years. But by 2035, they gave a number of 48,000 new people in Charlottesville, Elmerall. What is the state population right now? Do you know? The state population? The state of population. The, the, what's the, what is the area population uh, right now? Elmerall is 104, and the city is another 44. So it's the it's it's taking us from a, from a city county 150 up to 200. And that's by 2035. 2035. So that's 48,000 new people per city. Was it 2,800 units? I know. I asked 2,800 like, units and, and 48,000 people, the 17 <laughs> people per unit. <laughs> <laughs> See, they're not counting units. I actually asked to be sure I didn't like completely, you know, write down the wrong number. They said it was 2,800 units, but they also aren't counting anything in the pipeline. So I have the I have the presentation. I can't get to it from here. Uh, but all of it. I'll check. I asked I ask the question. That doesn't make any sense. No. That's what I'm I'll check it tomorrow morning and send out. I mean, Ann and I left scratching our heads. Yeah. We asked to clarify the number, and then we asked, are they not counting the pipeline? And they're not counting the pipeline. So like I know they're not. Hill, yeah. which is on the border of this small area plan, they're not considering in their analysis, which I think is a mistake. It's a huge development right there on the boundary of the small area plan, so it impacts this plan. That's separate from this area, but. Um, um, while we're talking about the bill, it might not be a good idea since we talked about that HR bill. If that bill is essentially something that's going to get the foot of Richmond off our neck, maybe the CCA should, should make a resolution to support the bill and send it to our legislators. If that's what the bill does. Emily, am I correct when you mentioned this House Bill 1735 that if passed, it would kind of take the handcuffs off a little bit on things like CACs? Yes. Okay, thank you. I mean, the people could mention profits without it seeming like Yes. <laughs> yes. Jenny would still be handcuffed, but yeah. while everyone else would be.
So if I can, before we adjourn, I want to go back to Tom because I make sure I understood what happened. So you just said that that house bill got tabled. Yeah, so it's, done. it's not this happening. This afternoon, apparently. Nice idea. I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> well, that's why Wait, I mean, in Virginia, we have the finest laws money can buy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, thing, just to bring closure up, we, we identified a, a two fifty of a functional area. Mm -hmm. We may solicit interest in champions for that area because we love that kind of open area. did that. Uh, you know what I didn't? That's actually a really good suggestion. Thanks for taking us back to that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that sort of um, again, we can, if somebody wants to put their hand up now, we can deal with that. We can wait until new members, uh, whatever that is, it's a good suggestion that cost us, sorry for, for uh, people seem so in, in anxious to wrap up the discussion. Anybody want to? Somebody second. Walter. Mike? Okay, thank you. Um, anything else on that one? Otherwise, James, go ahead. Um, Ann asked me to, if I wanted to fill in for a uh, Vernon Jones, he's leaving the board, the Economic Development Authority Board, on the 19th. I was going to sit in on the meeting last night, but I had to watch my kids. Um, that board, the four-year board, um, their mission on the website says they acquire, own, lease, and dispose of properties and make loans and issue bonds to promote industry and development by producing manufacturing, industrial, Governmental nonprofit and commercial enterprises and institutions of higher education to locate and or remain in the county and to further the use of agricultural products and natural resources. Whatever that means. So um, I'm probably going to move forward and do that, although I really don't know what I'm getting into. Sounds fun. Um, so the next month I will do that the night before I come here. So um, hopefully I'll be a little bit more of, uh, I guess, depth of knowledge on the economic development side of things, so I can speak to what's going on in Thursday. If anything comes my way, there's seven other people on the board. So. I think that's great. I'll learn a lot, and I'll be able to speak probably a little bit more in depth on projects in the area. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, I had seen that vacancy, but uh, so that was really good. Thanks for that. Um, again, amazingly, we've done early. Any other agenda items, announcements? Um, again, I think next month, as I said, Kevin and will be here talking about transportation priorities. Um, and we'll see whether it's worth having a discussion about uh, these community uh, implementation projects. I think we'll probably need to wait until we get some more clarification from the board. Um, but if people want to you know, have a great project they want to talk about, let me know and we can have a report. Anything else? And we're done. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.